Uh, thank you all for being here this afternoon. So, uh, my name is Sylvain Maudui, and I'm working at Dailymotion uh, as the lead API evangelist. And I'm really glad to, uh, to speak at the API days, and especially uh, this afternoon, uh, in the dedicated track to API portals and uh, developer experience. Because uh, the Dailymotion, Dailymotion sorry, uh, API team, so all of those awesome folks, uh, we just received uh, this awesome and quite heavy award, uh, <laughs> uh, which is uh, the uh, best overall dev portal award elected by the community. So this is us uh, an awesome opportunity to share a bit with you uh, how Dailymotion, so as an API provider, decided to go way beyond API documentation uh, to design a hub uh, for a better developer experience for its community. So, if you don't know Dailymotion well yet, uh, it is the home of videos that matter. So, we are one of the leading premium video destination platform in the world, and with uh, 300 million unique visitors per month, viewing more than 3 billion videos each month on any devices, TVs, or set-up boxes, uh, we've got around a, <coughs> a total of more than 150 million videos available in our catalog. And of course, uh, we're an API first company. So in order to be where we are today, we've had quite an interesting API journey. So Dimension was born in uh, 2005, um, and we didn't have any API at the time. But we built an internal REST API in 2010 to start uh, powering our native apps. But just one year later, uh, we made the decision to share our API to the world. So this was also uh, the first iteration of our dev portal, uh, which was at the time quite a simple you know, documentation page at first. Uh, but a few years later, actually last year, uh, we recreated the entire uh, Dailymotion experience, so focused on premium content and uh, experience for viewers but also uh, the whole technical stack under the hood uh, with a brand new internal uh, geo-distributed GraphQL API. But now, so this year and next year, uh, our current focus is to iteratively revamp uh, our dev model in order to focus way more on our API community and support. So let's jump into our or uh, dev portal. So Dailymotion is not a single API product company. So uh, in our dev portal, you will find three main public APIs you can use depending on your use case. So we've got a data API for consuming and editing video catalog metadata, but also a player API for embedding you know, the Dailymotion player uh, easily in your external website and apps. And finally, a reporting API for building a custom performance reports, so have insight about your views, your revenues, and everything like advanced stuff uh, for our more uh, advanced partners. But regardless of your community use cases or needs, uh, you will need to provide the basis for them. So a performance, a healthy, a sustainable API product, and also a great documentation to guide them, right? So at Dailymotion, uh, our API is quite powerful, accessible, and worldwide, and with more than uh, 150,000 registered API keys, uh, letting more than uh, 300 million users using our API day and night all around the world. So we receive an average of 400 million requests a day. So this is quite heavy, right? Uh, but uh, in order to offer a good developer experience, we also need to ensure that our API is as fast as possible, right? And always available so that uh, each video providers uh, all around the world can push their uh, you know, exclusive news content or maybe their sport uh, event live feed on the animation without any worry because you know, maybe they are located in Seattle at the time and our API team is, well, actually in bed in Paris. Um, but a good product isn't just about performance. So all of those people trusted us for more than seven years because we ensure 
sustainable third-party integrations. So we ensure that our API contract, so our schema, doesn't break in time. And even if we are improving our products every day. So how can we do that? So it turns out that uh, our API lets us perform usage analysis on each resource fields in order to set up um, smooth deprecation plans and guidance for every of our third parties to avoid any breaks on their product. And of course, uh, every depreciations are automatically displayed as warning notice in our API reference. And this is not <laughs> the only magic trick we have inside this documentation. So we, de we design it to be up to date and automated since day one. So, uh, the thing is, our API users will always find detailed and accurate info about each of our resources. For example, uh, a specific field visibility or require permissions in order to read or edit its value. Uh, but this is, everything is, uh, it's possible because our team attach semantic annotations directly in our code base. So this tweet actually triggers uh, doc updates uh, each time someone brings a new evolution on the API. So, okay, let's recap a bit. This is not something new, I think, for every one of you. I think that 99% uh, of you guys already do that. Uh, so, okay, we have on the one side a good, stable, um, performant product, and we've got a good documentation. So, that's the basis. But, as we saw at the, in the beginning, at the emotion, we really want to go further. So uh, our core philosophy is to actually focus on our community and offer them uh, even a better developer experience. So yeah, let's move up a gear. So to build a community hub that could actually inspire our community, the first thing uh, we should consider is to actually know them better. So at the emotion, we define three personas who are probably representing uh, our community the best. So we've got the newbie. So this one uh, is curious, and maybe he's got a bunch of free time, right? He likes to play with you know technologies, and and maybe he wants to try our API for fun, or maybe for a side project. And we've got the expert. So this guy, he uses APIs for professional or more advanced purposes, right? Uh, he probably read. Uh, specialized press on technical articles, and it really looks for accurate technical information and quickly. And finally, we've got the influencer. So it could be an IT journalist, a blogger, or maybe another IT leader actor. And this guy looks for high-level news to share with his audience. So he's probably very aware of the engineering market evolution. He probably already follows uh, the emotions activity, um, maybe other you know digital big companies, uh, but is more interested in you know the business aspect of APIs more than technical details. So our challenge was to design a clever and universal solution to communicate uh, effectively with all of those very different profiles. So a few months ago we. <laughs> actually announced our dev portal with a dedicated news section. So the goal was one place to host all our editorial content. So one place to keep them up to date, to guide them around you know, our different products, and offer them uh, another look at the API industry, and also boost their creativity. But you know, one place to, to speak to a wide variety of people could be quite messy, right? So uh, our approach is to actually offer them the right content to the right people and at the right time on their API journey. So probably different kind of uh, content formats will uh, probably resonate differently for our three main community profiles. So for example, uh, uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorials or uh, some some guides or maybe quick start videos, uh, they will probably resonate the best for a newbie profile. But for expert profile, you will probably get uh, more excited uh, by finding detailed uh, evolution in our change logs, maybe reading inspirational API-focused blog posts, 
I'm being informed uh, about all the new features uh, we launches that could probably en uh, enhance its existing integration with Dailymotion. And finally, the influential profile, he will see content which can be relayed to its wider audience, uh, such as you know, events on meetups coverings, data content and studies around you know, the API market and our API ecosystem, and also more social content like uh, could be short recaps around actions you could do with the API, or top fives, or lists, something that could easily share on uh, social networks. And one example of a really interesting content uh, format I would like to, to share with you today is Team Portraits. So we publish Team Portraits to let the community know more about the people who are building the Emotion API ecosystem and who are alongside to guide them uh, to build strong integrations. So on the right is a portrait of one of our lead developers who works daily on our API engine. And this is the most popular format on our dev model. So why? Because it's reliable and it's concrete. So we are opening the door of our company we're explaining what our missions are and our day-to-day -day lives are about. And this is also a wonderful format for people to read because they actually can identify with a peer, such as a, a back-end developer on this example. And, and they can know about uh, working behind the scene of a product they use every day. So it's also uh, a really good social format because you know, we were really surprised to see how much those articles were viral, loved, and uh, actually reshared. And talking about sharing, we really want to ease the sharing of this content to a wider developer community. So we wanted to place our dev portal right at the center of a social ecosystem, actually by becoming a community hub. So LinkedIn, Medium, Twitter, meetups, newsletter. So we, we try to use every communication channel at our disposal to, to share and highlight all the great things people can do with our API. And we encourage people to actually navigate across uh, those platforms in order to, to enjoy all of the inspiring editorial content. And uh, if they love uh, one of these, they always, always will be able to, to browse uh, this community hub in order to discover more stories. And we know that such diverse contents could actually trigger reactions in our audience. So communication can't really work if it's done only in one direction. And we really value our community voice. So that's why we strongly encourage uh, our worldwide community to, to reach their keyboard after uh, every content we create and engage the conversation by sharing their opinion, their experience, maybe that feedback with the rest of the community and of course with our team. But you know, sometimes uh, some conversation won't be about opinions or feedback, uh, but the there will be a call for help. And as a tech company, we really know that in that case, there is actually no better person to help a developer than, guess it, another developer. So that's why we didn't want our community to experience like a dummy, automated customer support, uh, or a random general support agent team. So we actually make sure that we are, uh, hire only people with both engineering skills and customer support ones for every of our API support positions. So in addition to you know, responding more quickly and to more requests in a month, this also allowed us to raise the quality of our responses significantly. And to explain a bit about, for, uh, to, to show you an example, uh, I've got here an example of a support use case we encountered recently. So we've got uh, an API user uh, who came to us asking us a, a question because he had trouble trying to use our APIs on his website. So the question was, 
hey, uh, I'm trying to, to upload videos through, uh, through my website configured with HTTPS in JavaScript. However, I get an error stating that the endpoint is not secure. Okay, so here, typical non-tech uh, non support agent, or maybe uh, an automated system, would not have been uh, able to easily spot what the problem is really about. And their response would definitely be something like, you know, check the documentation again. So yeah, implying that the user here probably did something wrong on this side. But you know, it's, it's quite hard because we see some missing infos here. So, okay, this guy, you, you want to upload, good. We've got that. Uh, we've got also his language, JavaScript, good. But is he using RSDKs? Is he directly hitting RST API without any libraries? So our API is HTTPS only, so what the heck is this error message? Where it comes from, right? What, what the hell is this? endpoint uh, the error is about then. But our support team did under this way more deeply. So it goes like this. So after looking at the code you provided, you should probably know that the API is returning HTTP links by default. So if you want to get secure URLs, you can use the SSL assets global parameter in your API call. And we give him like an example of how, how to do that in JavaScript. And also we had like, hey, you can find more info about this parameter in our reference documentation available here. So what happened here? So we downloaded this code, we tried to execute it, and we reproduce the error. We actually understand where the issue, uh, the issue is coming from. We gave him directly in the response the reason of the failure, how to get around the problem, we show him how to do it in the language he, pro he used, and we also offer him uh, to get more information uh, about what this parameter is about with a permalink, which will let him directly on the specific part of the documentation. So only a developer inside a, a, a top-notch support team would un have been able to dissect this kind of problem so deeply and bring such a complete response. So, sorry? Yeah, in one minute, because we are all superhumans. <laughs> uh, and the story doesn't end here. So these kind of feedbacks or questions are also an awesome opportunity to improve their portals as well. So after responding to this ticket, we understand that maybe we could improve our tutorials by you know, embedding the specific tip uh, in order to benefit other developers which could have the same question or the same problem. And we also push a project in our roadmap to think about the possibility to have HTTPS assets available globally by default. So this is a great example of a virtual cycle created by the support feedback loop. Uh, so be open to feedback, let people share their issues so we solve their issues by guiding them, but we also seize the opportunity to enhance both our documentation and, in this case, our API product for the greater good. So, what are the key takeaways of all this? So you should inspire and support developers. So the first step is, of course, it is to provide spaces of the pyramid, right? So build a good product, performance, secure, healthy, and sustainable API. But also a good documentation, so variables, up to date, and easy to explore. But dev portals can be so much more than a toolbox. So by adding extra layers to this pyramid, you'll be able to empower your API users with news, with community management, and of course with a top-notch support effort. So your dev portal uh, is not only going to be a great showcase for your products, but also an impressive source of inspiration for your developers. And of course for Dailymotion, that, that's 
just the beginning. So we plan to revamp our dev portal again next year uh, by you know, building new thematic content hubs with dedicated guides, some more original and inspiring content formats, a brand new API specification using OpenAPI, and uh, of course a lot of other improvements. So stay tuned, and uh, of course, uh, like I said previously, we really value our community voice, so don't be afraid to, to engage the conversation by giving us feedback. So that's all for me today, and uh, if you want to, to tap into what's happening at Dailymotion and discover more about our engineering team, our products, or our events, uh, feel free to follow our Twitter feed, so that's Dailymotion Eng for engineering. <laughs> And uh, of course, I uh, encourage you to browse our dev portal. So it's available on developer.animation.com. So thank you all.